Morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh. I want to deal with uh, another video in the City and Girls Carpentry and Joinery course. We're talking about tools and materials used in the manufacture of bench joinery products. Now, we've already dealt with the subject of timber-based materials. This will be found in Chapter 3. And we've already dealt with ironmongery, which was dealt with in Chapter 4. So now we need to talk about um, woodworking tools and we're going to be talking about all the different cutting tools I'm not going to demonstrate all of them in front of you many of you will know what these tools are anyway um, but I just want to run through them so that you just are familiar with these tools the first tool and the most obvious tool is the chisel and we need to remember that the chisel has various parts to it um, it has a blade with a cutting edge across the end and it has a tang and it has a washer and it has a handle. Now these handles must be looked after very carefully. We don't want to be hitting uh, the end of a wooden handle with something that's made of steel because what will happen is the wood will be damaged and then when you put your wrist on it and want to push, you'll find a little scratch and it'll cause blisters on your hand. So it's very important that we don't, uh, all these tools, all these chisels are pretty strong nowadays but we don't want to be hurting ourselves on our hands by using them. Now the most uh, obvious uh, chisel is the bevel edge chisel. This is a, a chisel that has a, a, an edge that's beveled at the side. So as you're sliding in, it has a, a low profile on the sides. Um, these are the most common chisels that people use today. Whenever people talk about a chisel, they're almost invariably talking about a bevel edge chisel but there are other types and for example there's firmer chisels now just as I said that on a bevel edge chisel you've got um, um, some bevels down the side of it on a firmer chisel they're just square in other words they're a firmer chisel they're much stronger there's more metal in there and of course you can use um, a little bit more power with a mallet um, hitting them um, so it's just a, if, you, if you cut one in half, you can imagine it would just be a long box like that. Um, the next one then is the mortise chisel. Now the mortise chisel is not a firmer chisel, it's not a bevel edge chisel. It's a chisel all in its own right. It has a ferrule at the one end because it's going to be receiving a lot of um, hitting. Um, and the, 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 the mortise chisel, I said that the previous ones are long and flat like that. These are much higher and deep. They have much more height to the chisel. Um, they're always used in a vertical plane. They're always used upright. Um, and you can get them in all sorts of widths. You can go right up to you know an inch, inch and a half, uh, and so on. Um, they are a specialized chisel, specifically for making mortises and only for making mortises. If you have a look at my previous uh, videos on this series, you'll see that um, the mortise chisel is used in a very special way for cleaning out clean mortises. Now, as well as mortise chisels, there's also what's called gauges, gauges or gouges. Uh, people call these things by different names in different parts of the country. In, up my way, it's called a gauge. Um, but the trouble is that gets mixed up with another tool, which is called a gauge. So it's called um, by some people a gouge. And it is, instead of it being straight across like that, like a firmer chisel would be, it's curved. And the interesting thing about the gauge is there's two different types. There's the one which has the cutting edge on the, well, the cutting edge is on the end of the timber. But the, the way in which the bevel is put on is either on the inside of the curve or it's on the outside of the curve. Totally different types of uh, of, uh, of, of gouges or gauges um, so these t these these chisels they are chisels and these chisels are exceptionally useful they're exceptionally useful for making small circular cuts into timber whether on the outside of a circle or on the inside of a circle there are other types of chisels um, for example there's what's called butt chisels now these are just chisels that have a very short blade Okay, and they're specialized for getting into difficult places or for doing very simple operations like that of cutting a, uh, a butt hinge.
that's maybe why they call it that chisel and of course there's Japanese chisels and there's uh, there's lots of other chisels around the world of all different types of shape shapes there's also a draw lock chisels now these are very very tiny um, they have a chisel which is funnily enough on a little return it looks like the crank um, on an engine um, and um, it's, it's for getting into the tiny little spaces inside a lock so that's chisels and one day we might talk about how chisels are sharpened in fact uh, we're going to talk about sharpening when we come to planes and we're going to talk about planes next now what you need to do is to google the picture of a plane um, and have a look at all the different parts of a plane the bottom of a plane is called the foot or the sole um, the back of the plane at the sole is called the heel and the front of the plane is called the toe so you can understand why it's called the sole um, the place where the blade sticks through is called the mouth um, the, at the front there's a knob and at the back there's a handle that's fairly straightforward now the actual plane itself the uh, typical Stanley plane has is made of metal and is very strong and it has various uh, parts to it which are important first of all it has a frog and it has a um, the frog is the thing which holds the, um, the contraption that holds the blade okay and holds that into um, into the um, into the sole of the plane so this is held at an angle typically of about 40 uh, 45 degrees it's about 45 degrees uh, the blade and the cap iron fit on the top so the blade is attached to um, a, is attached to um, is, is attached to the back iron now the back iron um, is is a piece of sprung steel uh, it's exceptionally strong but it's unable to be sharpened and the blade is made of the plain iron is made of steel which can be sharpened but isn't springy so what happens is we actually combine the two and bolt them together with a little screw and this combines the springiness and the strength of the spring with the sharpness of the plain iron so the two by putting the two together you end up something which is very strong and very sharp the whole lot then is put into the frog um, cradle where it, where it sits and then on top of that goes the, um, the, the cap iron now the cap iron is a large uh, piece of generally um, um, generally um, a silver looking uh, device which fits on the top and it's it has a cap iron it's like a cam which turns around to hold everything in place um, there's a lever cap that the lever cap is the thing that holds everything in place and the cap screw is the thing that actually holds it in the center of the cap iron uh, obviously this is much easier uh, to talk about by looking at it than by talking about it but there we are uh, there's also another interesting uh, part to the plane the um, at the back of the of the iron there is a lateral adjuster now when you move the lateral adjuster either way it causes the blade to turn in onto the timber okay and when you look down it you can see the blade sticking out one side or the other side and you just the lateral adjustment will just move it to put it in the center there's also an adjusting screw now what the adjusting screw does when you spin it it it, it, it causes the blade to move down a tiny amount or to move up a tiny amount and this is where you get the adjustment for the thickness of the shavings okay <clears throat> now there's lots of different types of planes first of all there's the triplane the triplane is about this big it's really large and then you even got the jointer which is even longer still most people don't use jointers anymore but they will use a triplane very often in a workshop and they'll also use a jack plane now a jack plane is a plane of about say 375 to 400 millimeters long it's the standard and the basic plane for all woodworkers it's the most basic plane and people will have two or three of these it's called a jack plane number five they'll have two or three of these and they'll use you know one for different purposes um, and sometimes people take the take the um, take the blades out and turn them into quite a deep curve it's called a scrub plane so that you can go across grain with it 
without splintering the timber too much. Now there's also the smoothing plane. Now the smoothing plane, if the jack plane is this big, the smoothing plane is a lot smaller. Um, it's the plane that people turn to immediately. It tends to be not as expensive. But the, the thing is, the smoothing plane is only for the purpose of smoothing. Okay, and you're going to say to me, what's smoothing, Stephen? Well, smoothing is the, is, is the action when you take a frame of timber, you may have like a door frame, like a door or a window, and you, you've got the, where the joints come together, there's just a slight, a slight difference in height. Okay, so the smoothing plane will go over those difference in heights and it'll go right around the, the top of the table or the window and it will smooth them all down. Now it really, really should only be used for that purpose or it should be used for very light carpentry tasks. If you've got something very small to plane, you wouldn't want to use a great big jack plane on it. Okay, um, and then of course there's a block plane. The block plane is a little plane that you can hold in your one hand. You can put your finger on the top. There's a place to put your finger and there's a place to hold at the side. And you literally just, you, it's used. Some people wonder whether there's even a use for this, but there is a use for this. It's used for very, very small shaving. That's all it's for. And then, of course, there's a few other planes. There's First of all, there's the rebate plane. Now, most planes have a blade that stays within the body of the plane. But the rebate plane is unusual. It has a blade which is wider than the width of the plane itself. This means it's able to get into corners and plane out corners because there's no metal at the side to interfere with the operation. So rebate planes are beautiful and they're, if they're sharp, and they're a little bit tricky to set up, a little bit more tricky to set up than an ordinary plane. Now, people talk about the combination plane and this was a plane which I suppose nowadays has been replaced pretty well by the router, the electric router. Um, but this was a plane that had lots of interchangeable small blades. And what you could do is you could do grooves, you could do um, you could do tongues, you could do ovolo moulds, all the different types of moulds that you'd need to do on wood could be done with a combination plane. There's also spoke shaves. Now spoke shaves are simple little devices. They've got two hands, two handles. And you, you operate with your thumb, you put your thumb on the two handles and you push it. Obviously the word spoke shave comes from the idea when uh, wheels were made of wood and the spokes of the wheels needed to be shaved to make them beautiful and to make them fit. And there's three types. There's the one that, um, the one where the sole is flat okay uh, so that'll do uh, that'll do um external cir circles there's one where the f where the the sole is curved upwards and that'll do the insides of circles and you have a few other varieties as well okay i mean when we're talking about tools you know there are thousands upon thousands of different types of tools thousands upon thousands and they all have a particular purpose and they all uh, do something okay <laughs> but we don't necessarily need all of them ourselves now we're going to go through the sharpening experience um, on a different video, a sharpening video. So I'll explain all about that and we'll leave that for another day. Okay, we're going to talk now about saws. Um, the first thing we need to remember about saws is that there's three different types, three different types of saw. That is, there's three different types of saw teeth. That's it. That's the point. There's the type of teeth whereby the blades are all one after another in Right, but flat on, and they're called rip saws. Uh, the teeth are flat on, and they're specifically designed to go down the grain of timber. They typically have only um, five to seven teeth to the inch. Okay, so they're really quite large. The saws themselves are also quite large, and you get into the, you get used to handling a large saw. And of course, because it's very large, it can rip through timber very quickly. There's also the cross-cut saw, which typically um, is for going across the grain. The saw shapes are different because instead of them coming forwards like that, they tend to stick out like that. And what they're doing is they're severing through the grain. And as they sever through the grain, so they cut. And then there's a last one called the fleam. Okay, now the fleam is quite a tall tooth which sticks up, 
I can imagine it like that, are quite a tall tuff that sticks up and then it has a secondary bevel. Okay, these teeth tend to be hardened, uh, super hardened, and uh, they don't unable to be, um, they're not able to be sharpened. And unable, so all that we can do with them is look after them carefully. Uh, some people call it a jet saw, but that, the word jet is just a name, a trade name for a saw. Okay, then there's hand saws. So a hand saw, a typical hand saw, is a crosscut saw, or sometimes it's a combination between the two. And what it does is it just is a general purpose saw. Okay, now we have coping saws, we have tenon saws, we have dovetails and gent saws. Now these are all saws doing just about the same thing as what another, um, as what another um, saw will do. There we are, we'll come back and talk to you about more tools on the next video. See you soon, bye for now.